What a wonderful day to work inside. You can't see this there, you can see it. We came back to do the R290 coil. So we got that. So we're gonna get that changed. We've got a cap tube, we're gonna put a new one of those in too. New dryer, obviously, and then we'll have to brace it off because it's factory warranty. We gotta seal it up like they want it. All right, we're holding temperature good here. Everything's 30, 31, so we're looking good there. We're gonna go ahead and probably get this leveled, uh, emptied out here. Oh my, we're gonna have to clean all that out. So we got this down, you can see we're getting a little ice here, which it could have been in a speed frost off cycle. The main coil up in here looks okay. You see it's all clear. Last time I was able to get up into there and get those screws out. We've got this all loosened up. We're just going to cut the cap tube right there. We got our detector here just beeping away. We bled a little bit off, but I didn't want to get too crazy without letting that thing run. You never know where combustible source is at. Unfortunately, I don't have a good place to run my hose to, or I'd run my big long one, so we're kind of just venting it out away from all the equipment back here. And if it gets too strong, then we'll deal with it then, so. Such a slow, tedious process. We've already had gotten the system completely drained down off the, off the uh, suction side there. Went ahead and cut the high side. Now I'm purging nitrogen completely through the system. Forcing it from the suction side through the coil and everything else and working its way back over to here. Got the new coil out and I just noticed that it didn't record as I removed it. What I ended up doing is I cut the cap tube here and then I ended up cutting the refrigerant line right there i just chopped it out they want you to remove all the components by chopping them out not embracing them you want to cut everything out and then uh, once you've you know already got everything completely bled out as far as with nitrogen make sure everything's out of there then go ahead and brace it back in obviously still using your nitrogen like you should be doing i just now noticed they didn't put that 90 on the new one so we're gonna have to steal that off that one or make a new one one or the other right now what we got is uh the cap tube there i got a new one of those that sensor there that goes in the back of the coil at the top that needs to be put back into place when we get it in there but so far nothing super special here Got the old capillary tube here, and we got the new one. Looking at the size there, I'm gonna count my loops, make sure they're the same length. If not, I'll unwind it and wind it back up, but it did at least give me that. They were good enough to give me a new filter dryer, too. They forgot to send me my R290, though. Luckily, I've got some. Counted it, I got about eight loops here, about eight loops there. Good on that, we know it's the same. Make sure our little holes are open there, and we'll get that up there ready to go after we embrace those things. That's uh, insulation on the end there. We got our nitrogen regulator on braze mode. Got a little adapter here, We're purging through the coil. Gonna get that into place. Once that's into place, I've gotta heat it up, get this into the, the hole there. Gave you this piece, kind of chintzy of them not to. Uh, there, heated it up. Should be good to go. Just put a little bit of braze on that. Go. Go. Let it cool for a second. We'll blow through there with the nitrogen a little harder. Make sure we can feel it coming through the capillary tube. You can always lick your finger, and then it'll feel, you'll feel that cold air on the back side of it. So it's coming through. This is where I have a little regulator, and this little gizmo gadget here, which I had to find this online. This is made by JB. 
I think I have this in my toolbox area. If not, I can always look it up. I don't know if eBay had, or I don't know if Amazon had this or not. I forget. I had to do a lot of searching to get it. It does quarter inch all the way up to, I think, seven eighths. It just makes it easy. Here's a perfect example of doing the job right. If you got the right tools, you can do the job right. I did notice it changed this coil. It's black. It makes me wonder if it's made by somebody else. Get that put back in there once we're done. That definitely's got to go back here in the back. We'll give it a little shove when we get into that place. So we're bleeding through there, it's coming through the cap too, which is good. It's purging through that there and it's making its way back down here to the bottom. soldered that shut when that came out so now I'm basically gonna have to blow through my high side to blow that solder out of there while I heat it up. This is the way I wanted to do it but at this point ain't a whole lot I can do about it. Definitely make sure you got your safety glasses on. Kind of put a suck to blow something through your freaking eye. Okay so we can get that cap tube in there now. Me, as usual, I want to make sure my freaking cap tube look pretty in case somebody comes back and looks at it. That's why I soldered it shut. So I basically accidentally um, heated it up again to try to get that little goober off of it and then freaking it soldered shut, which sucks. But that's what happens when you try to do a good job. Sometimes things go wrong. Alright, well, we're going to shut that in there once we heat it up. Unfortunately, it's just so much you can do. Okay, we heated that up and got it up in there. Had an emergency phone call come in. Of course, people don't answer their phone when you t call them because they idiots turn their phones off and put it on vibrate. There's no freaking room to get in here at all. Okay, so we got it pulled up in there about as good as you're gonna get it. Let's check it for leaks and move on. The R290 stuff just seems like it has a few issues, but it yeah. stands out more because it is a newer, newer refrigerant in the United yeah. States. I um, bought a... Uh... We uh, moved into a new house and we took our old fridge, it was older, 15 years old, and we put it on the garage. We got, I mean, we had a stuff full, you know, freezer, fridge, and one day of the summer I walked out there and everything was soft. Yep. Uh, so I told my wife, I said, hey, you know, fuck it, let's spend the extra money and let's just get a new one. And this winter went out there. I the new ones are worse than the old ones. Yeah. Yeah. The, uh, something with the thermostats and the frigidaires, if it's real cold, it doesn't want to run the freezer. So yeah. it's like 35 degrees in there. Well, they're not made to be ran in cold weather. Right. Um, it, uh, they're made for 70 degree, you know, yeah. ambience. Right. But you put them in a garage, I mean, like even a pot machine, it's got special things in there yeah. to allow it to do that. Yep, so I was pretty happy. So I ended up ordering then a garage uh, chest freezer. So nice. I mean, the fridge and everything still works. I mean, if it's cold outside, it's, the fridge is going to be blown off to keep the beer and water in there anyways. But yeah, it's, uh, it's unfortunate. We had a one service guy called and he said, honestly, he said, if you want a garage fridge, he said, you're better off getting something that's 10 years old in the use section. He goes, you'll probably get more life out of it. Yep, true.
That stuff so thin it's a pain in the ass to I mean, you gotta know what you're doing. It, uh, the big thing is make sure you're running nitrogen like I'm doing because that carbon you see on the outside can get on the inside and then that's pluck it up. So yeah. that's what takes a lot longer when you do it right. So I've never done small stuff like that. When I was doing yeah, back in the day, I mean, we used to just raise it and not run nitrogen or nothing. Still, people do like that, but. If you want to not have a call back later, especially when you're talking a capillary tube, that, that's such a restricted device. Uh, between that and then, the, say the compressor was running into a negative, was run really hot, that's polyester oil. Whereas before, those were like mineral oils. Well, the polyester oil will break down and then it'll get clogged into the capillary tube. So that's why I changed your capillary tube and then made sure it purged nitrogen. So any of that carbon stuff can get in there and get your capillary tube. If the compressor gets into a negative, it can break down the oil and it'll get in the capillary tube and create all kinds of nightmares. Wicked. Yeah, but since it wasn't into a negative yet, they didn't send me a new compressor. Otherwise, they would have sent me a new compressor too. I mean, that's, you know, that's, that's, that, those are the small things. As long as people follow the procedures, it's not bad. Yeah. So, but I mean, yeah, it's pretty much now everything's brazen. I got to do a pressure test on it and then evacuate it and charge it back up again. And then rock and roll. Yeah, pretty much. And you should be good for at least another three or four weeks. Another what? <laughs> <laughs> three or four weeks. Three or four weeks. <laughs> that was funny. I was working for Peter, so I'd work a three month period when we were closed. Then I wouldn't work until the following summer. And it seemed like, yeah, like running nitrogen through lines. Like my first summer, you didn't, you didn't do that. And then the next summer, I'm like, what are you talking about? And they're like, yeah, you have to run nitrogen through the lines while you're doing it. Like, yeah. I mean, there's a lot of guys that don't. I, I bought a regulator that makes it really easy to do it right. I mean, I got some other gizmos like like this that I can sit there and jam into the coil while I'm brazing an external unit and it allows me to flow nitrogen through it. I mean, there's all kinds of tricks. just depends on how involved somebody is into it. Sure. So, I mean. Super. Yeah. I appreciate everything you've done. No yeah, problem. Bro. We're like getting. I said, Luke had nothing but great things to say about you guys. So yeah, that's I'm, nice. To know. I try to do a good job too. So I mean, I I make YouTube videos and stuff like that. So at first the company didn't like it, but I'm like, wait a minute, you got proof that I did the job right. Yeah, I'm not gonna sure. put it out there for 5,000, 10,000 people to see. Yeah, if I'm gonna do it wrong. So sure, sure. No, that's. It eventually got them to okay. I mean, I recorded the the last repair and stuff, and you know, it got quite a few things. Even True, a guy from True, watched it, and he's like, "Yeah, we've had a couple issues." We got it under pressure test here, 180 pounds, both sides, both are hooked up. Haven't picked up any leaks yet. We're gonna pull evacuation on this thing and uh, get a recharge, just like we did uh, when we uh, made the repair, or I should say when we first came out here. So, so far it's holding just fine. No drops or anything like that. We got it evacuating. We have all of our treater cores pulled out. When I get done recharging this, I'm gonna pinch this off here and here, raise it shut, and then we'll be done. This thing holds three ounces, and uh, we're already in less than a minute and a half, already at 27 inches. We're gonna continue pulling this thing down, make sure it holds. I gotta put the micron gauge on it yet. Normally I don't pull through the hoses, but it's one of the things where it's really not worth the extra hassle for as small as this thing is. All right, this has been a major pain in my butt. All so. right, friend, can I squeeze by you for a second? You're so annoying. <laughs> Good sorry. grief. Why am I being you? Ugh. Wow. Yeah. Lisa What's was, my deal? Well, at least Lisa was a get, knee to the knee. Get me out of here. Good grief. <laughs> I'm doing delicate brain surgery here, and you're interrupting me. All right, so this thing's been a pain in my butt, like I said. It didn't want to hold for nothing. I think it's in valve core tools. I had the freaking uh, one from uh, 
AccuTools, I think that thing, that when you turn the ball, it instantly goes fast. And you can tell it just don't feel good. And then same thing, I mean, the C and D's did good, but that one there's a little difficult to turn. So anyhow, we're going to charge this thing up and see if it runs. That'll tell me whether or not I got an issue with my uh, solder joints. Maybe something's plugged up, which it's not going in very quickly, uh, which don't surprise me. Well, I might be about out of refrigerant, which could be the case. So I may have to switch bottles. I'll warm this one up, see if you got much pressure behind it. That's probably what's going on. It's always something, I'm telling you what. You're doing critically charged systems and this kind of crap happens. I want to get this on video because this really pisses me off. Watch this. The damn can took a and it doesn't work. Thanks a lot, Icor. Really nice. Really nice. Cheap junk cans. Malfunction. You can't unhook this when you're inside the building. Otherwise, you have a chance of having a fire. When everyone else has gone with the ones that look like a regular propane bottle. Why didn't they go with that? That would have made a hell of a lot more sense. I had to build my own little contraption here for it, but it works. That's what we're going to finish it out with. I would not recommend that garbage. I couldn't unhook my hoses. I literally had to unhook it, put my finger over it, and walk it out of the building. Because otherwise I was unhooking it from the system and would have blown everything out of the system. Dangerous. Pure dangerous. We got it in there. Let's see if this thing will suck it in now the rest of the way. I've got something wrong with my bridge joint. All right, so we got it weighed in. We pinched off the high side. Pressures are looking fairly similar to what we had before. Discharge temperature is a little higher at 135, but it's working and we're at 35 degrees. Now we're just waiting to see it hit temperature and I'm out of here.